my friend. Welcome to Seed and Sparrow Homestead. Finally, spring is here, revealing glimpses of hope and new life on our little homestead in the valley. Flowers are blooming, buds are bursting, vegetation is emerging everywhere we look. And for us, we have lots and lots of chirping. So these little ones are Cornish cross. We are raising them for meat. And I know that doesn't sound so nice right now. They're tiny, cute little things, but that is their purpose. That is what they are bred for. If you let Cornish cross go much longer than 10 weeks, usually we harvest around eight to nine weeks, they just start to develop a whole bunch of health issues. So although their lives are quite short, we make sure it's a good one. These next few though, we'll be adding to the family. So meat bagel, biscuit, muffin, and taters. Names courtesy of my six-year-old daughter, Eleanor. The black ones are Prairie Blue Bell, and the gray ones are Sapphire Olive Eggers, so we'll have some more green and blue eggs. We already have 10 layers, but we like to add a few more each spring to keep our egg supply up. followed me for any length of time you know I love my roses I have seven rose bushes right now in my garden I just ordered three more five of my rose bushes are from David Austin these three I just ordered are from David Austin so I'll have eight total from there and then the other two are just random ones I got from a greenhouse um, each year I seem to be purchasing at least two or three soon my entire yard is just gonna be filled with them I just I love them so much. They bring me so much joy. Um, so they come bare root, like this here. And the three varieties I got are all shrub type rose bushes. None of them are climbers this year. I already have two climbers and I just don't really know where I'd put another one. So let me tell you what varieties. I'll put a picture up on the screen. This guy is Boscobel. This one is Munstead Wood beautiful variety they're all beautiful but that one I'm partial to and this one is Charles Darwin I don't have any that are yellow I believe this one is yellow so got these three guys here I have to read the planting instructions I think um, I might have to soak these roots a little bit but I can't remember from last year so I'm gonna check that out and we gotta get some holes dug and soil amended and we'll get these guys planted. They send you this cute little planting guide and it has like pruning guides and all sorts of pictures and such which is really nice. I am supposed to rehydrate it in a bucket of water for a minimum of two hours. So I'm gonna get these into a bucket and we'll work on something else. I've decided to put all of these roses in the cottage garden. That's where I have the majority of my roses. I have one up front by the house 
and then I have my two climbers in the raised bed garden. So I just made sure to dig the holes big enough for the bare roots. I think I did about 18 inches wide by 18 inches deep or so. And then I like to amend the soil a bit in the hole with some compost and some rose fertilizer. We still have pretty heavy clay soil in some areas. I'm working on that, but whenever I'm planting something like this, I like to throw in some really loose compost or even potting soil just so the roots don't feel like suffocated at first, but all of my roses really thrive in this location despite that heavy clay soil. So for a lot of roses, the variety you are purchasing is not actually the variety that the roots belong to. The variety you purchased has been grafted on to a hardier variety, a mother plant, if you will. So you need to make sure when planting that you are making sure that grafting point is beneath the soil surface. Otherwise, that mother plant might start to put off growth and you'll end up with a bloom that is not necessarily what you wanted. So Vigo was so kind and sent me some more of their metal raised garden beds to have in my garden. So I'm gonna put together two of those and I decided to do the two foot by six and a half foot variation. You can make them into a whole bunch of different sizes, which is really nice. And I got these in the British green to match my other ones in the front garden. I do really love these metal raised garden beds. I will probably always have wooden beds, at least some, because I do love that aesthetic. I just think it looks quaint and cozy and reminds me of what you would see in most vintage gardens. But I love the sustainability of the metal beds. They just last forever. We put in some wooden beds about two seasons ago and they're already just showing so much wear and tear so i think i'll always have a nice balance of some metal and some wood beds in my garden so space is limited here as you know on a quarter acre that you already have jam-packed with a whole bunch of stuff it's hard to figure out where to put things so it took matt and i a while figuring out where to put these two new beds but we figured it out and i'm very pleased with where they ended up so we decided to put one of the two beds here in front of the chicken coop we did space it out about eight inches from the fencing in hopes that the chickens can't get to whatever we plant in here. But my intention for this bed was to actually allow the kids to kind of have rain over this space, their own little garden space and somewhere for Grant to put his little trucks in. So there's the one and here is the second, which is actually next to the greenhouse. And I put some of my blackberry canes in here and I have two more coming from Norse Farms. I thought the five of them would go great in that space. Another job that needed done was getting these grow bags filled. I got these from Epic Gardening. They're super awesome. You can see here they're double lined, really heavy stitching. You can tell they're gonna last way longer than one season. I've bought some before that literally they just fell apart by the end of the season. I have so much hope that these are going to last much longer than that and they're very affordable as well. So if you're interested in those, I'll go ahead and drop the link down in the description as well as a discount code for you all. So much of our time here during early spring obviously goes to prepping the garden for planting. We're about five-ish weeks away from our expected last frost. That obviously is a approximate date and you just never know so as we approach that I always look out at the 10-day forecast and as long as there's nothing you know concerning in the temperatures then we go ahead and we plant so every fall my husband and I always do a whole lot you know to put the garden to bed for the winter and we always feel 
as though we've done a really good job. And then March hits and it's like, man, we're lo- walking around the place and we're like, there's a lot that we have to do yet. And then it's scrambling to get it all done. You know, after the weather clears up and snow is off the ground and the ground actually gets to be workable and we can find the supplies we need and then it's just go, go, go. So we got a big load of mushroom soil. That's what we're actually filling a lot of the beds with this year. Um, And I'm also amending some areas. So I'm sprinkling it all over the cottage garden. We added it to all of the raised beds in the in-ground garden and anywhere else that just needed you know, some oomph to the soil. So usually how I would fill a new bed is in thirds. The bottom third would be like twigs and leaves and any sort of organic type matter we can find laying around the yard. The second third would be screened topsoil that we'd get locally. And then the top third would just be some sort of compost. Most times I would use a mushroom soil. So What I've been finding is any of the screen topsoil we can get around here is just really heavy clay. That's just PA soil for you, at least in this area of PA, it's just clay. So I don't love that. And you know, I'm trying to help my soil and I don't wanna just keep putting more clay into the soil regardless if it's like a nice screen topsoil. So I'm gonna experiment this year and with a few of the new beds that we've put in, which I'll show you, in a video coming up. Um, We're gonna do straight compost, straight mushroom soil, and we're gonna compare them, how they perform to the beds that we already have. So this was really the only day in the last about two weeks that we've been able to get outside because in true PA weather fashion, it's very unpredictable. We get lots of false springs, some nice warm weather, and then it gets bitter cold, and then it rains for days and days, and days. So because of all this rain, we get to turn our attention back inside to some homemaking and some more preparation for the garden. Anyone who has a small home recognizes what this dining room table is. It is the central hub for all things. It is the kids play area. It's my workstation and office. It's where the garden gets started. It's where we do schoolwork. And on occasion, when it's not covered with all of these things, it's where we eat dinner. Quite honestly, it's been a little while since dinner has been had at this table. So I figured it was time. Let's clear it off. Let's make a nice meal and let's sit down as a family and enjoy each other's company. Let's talk dinner. I am going to share just a concoction I came up with this week that turned out really good and everyone enjoyed. So I took about five medium potatoes and I I peeled them, sliced them really thin, and then I doused them in some butter with a sprinkle of salt. And then we lay them out in a 9x13 baking dish and we bake them at 400 degrees for about 20 minutes until they're pretty soft cooked through. Around one pound of ground beef and that gets sprinkled over the top of the mostly cooked potatoes.
Next, I poured an entire can of creamed corn over the top of that. You could just use regular canned corn or you could use frozen corn as well. Now we're gonna make a sauce to pour over everything. This a soup mix was something that needed to be used up. It kind of started my idea for this. Quite a few videos back, we made some homemade cream of soup. So I'm using some cream of celery. This is about the equivalent to a can of it. And to that, I added about a half cup of milk. Gave that a stir, added about a cup of cheese. Some salt and pepper, I think I did is some onion powder, some garlic powder, and then you stir that until it's nice and smooth. That got poured all over the top, spread evenly, and then we top it off with some more cheese. This baked at 375 for about 20 to 25 minutes. Everything's already cooked. We're cooking the, the potatoes just a bit longer and allowing you know, all the flavors to mingle and everything to get nice and hot all the way through. So no sooner do we get it cleaned off, we're gonna make it dirty again. It's time to repot some of these tomatoes. Never in my, this is my seventh year of starting seeds and gardening, have I had tomatoes grow this quickly. I don't know what the deal is, but they're massive and they also need to be thinned out. So I went through and I divided them. I picked out the sturdiest looking plants and I just gently pulled them apart. Tomatoes are pretty hardy. You're not really gonna hurt them, but I do try to be gentle. And then I am just planting them down deeper. Along the stem of a tomato, it will push out more roots. Um, it's actually a vine. Wherever it touches soil along the stem, it will root. So I like to repot them down deeper, having the soil come up further on the stem. And I always find that I have a way stronger, sturdier plant. Besides the tomatoes, we have some other seeds that need sown. I am very much so behind on these things. But better late than never, so we're gonna get them started now. I am going to work on all of my squash, some zucchini, some cucumbers, and get some seeds sown. else I like to do in the spring in preparation for the busy season coming although I'm finding the busy season never really ends it just fluctuates but it gets really busy in um, 
spring and summer. So I like to prepare my freezers. We just made a whole bunch of bread. You can check that video out on the screen or down in the description. I've got some freezer meals coming, some more meals in a jar, but today we're gonna work on muffins for the freezer. So I wanna share with you kind of my base muffin recipe. It's refined, sugar-free, it's really good, and you can use it to make all sorts of different muffins with whatever add-ins you want. So this recipe is as follows, and as always, you can find the recipe in the description. So it's two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. I like to use organic when possible. I use one cup of coconut sugar. You could use whatever sugar you'd like, but I choose to use unrefined. Two and a half teaspoons of baking powder and one half teaspoon of baking soda. A half teaspoon of salt. Then we're gonna give all those dry ingredients a stir and grab another dish for our wet ingredients. We're gonna crack two eggs. Mix that with a third cup of sour cream until it's nice and smooth. Two teaspoons of vanilla. Now, if you have been following me for any length of time, you should realize by now that I'll tell you the correct measurement, but I always measure with my heart and we love vanilla, so it's usually more than that. We're gonna do two tablespoons of oil. I usually use either olive oil or avocado oil, and we're gonna do two tablespoons of pure maple syrup. I've melted a half cup of butter here. That's gonna go in, as well as one cup of milk. We're gonna combine the wet with the dry, mix it up well, and then we're going to fold in our add-ins. We're gonna do about a cup and a quarter to a cup and a half. I'm gonna do some mini chocolate chips in one batch, and then I made a second batch, and we're gonna add in about a cup and a quarter of frozen raspberries. But you could throw in any sort of fruit. You could take the base recipe and you could swirl in some like peanut butter and jelly. Really make it however you want. You can add some like crumble streusel topping as well. And then we're going to fold those things in and we're going to allow this to sit for about an hour um, to start and let those leavening agents get to work. That's how we're going to achieve a really nice rise on these muffins. Now we're gonna make some banana muffins as well. This is a completely different recipe, one I just got online that we really like. I haven't figured out quite yet how to incorporate mashed banana into that base recipe. So this is a little bit different. It is about five large, very ripe bananas mashed, three quarter cup of olive oil, three large eggs and two teaspoons of vanilla mix and set to the side. Then we're gonna combine three cups of all-purpose flour, one and one quarter cup of sugar. I chose coconut sugar again. One and a half teaspoons of baking soda, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, a teaspoon of cinnamon, and a half teaspoon of salt. And it also has optionally here, you could add in a cup of chocolate chips. Again, we're gonna combine the two together, mix well, and I set these off to rest for a little while as well. So I find with this recipe, you can fill the liners all the way to the top or even have them keeping a little bit and still have great results. They don't like spill over and give you like that muffin top. They just get really nice and domed. This here is a little hack I like to use just because I don't have a ton of muffin tins. Take some 
rings from your mason jars and set the liners in there on a cookie sheet. down in the dingy basement with the plant babies. I want to show you how the future garden is faring. Some of it looks really good, some of it not so much. I was down for the count after the oral surgery for a few days. I wasn't expecting to be in that much discomfort. Um, like I said, the whole process didn't really go according to plan and that tooth proved really difficult <laughs> to get out. So the entire left side of my face was just really hurting. Um, so I forgot to water for a few days like they just you know wasn't even a thought that crossed my mind didn't tell my husband to water them for me and I had a few pay the ultimate price but it's okay we still have like between five and six weeks until the last frost date so I could re-sow some of them inside or I could just direct sow them outside I haven't decided what I'm gonna do yet but I'm gonna give you an update on how the future garden is doing I moved the camera I think this is gonna be better lighting. I'm still a little bit overexposed, but I think it'll be good for the plants. Let me grab them. Yeah, you can see those. Pretty good. So this entire tray here is some of my medicinal herbs. So let me tell you what I have real quick. I wanted to document this process a bit better in more detail for you, but life just happens. So it is what it is. Um, I'll tell you what I've got. We're doing toothache plant, St. John's wort, fenugreek, dill, whorehound, lemon balm, lemon grass, valerian, feverfew, passion flower. Um, I haven't had skullcap or meadowsweet come up yet. I did read with meadowsweet it can take weeks for that to germinate, so I'm keeping it moist um, and we'll see. The skullcap, I'm not sure. I don't think it was supposed to take this long. It's been like four weeks, so I might reseed that one. Um, did I say Lobelia? I'm not sure if I said Lobelia. Uh, bone set, astragalus, mint, and then this guy right here. So that's stinging nettle and I totally forgot that I had sewed that. I've never come across stinging nettle out foraging. I don't know. It should be growing around here. I don't know if we're just looking in the wrong place, but I've never come in contact with it before. Totally forgot I planted it, and I always like run my hands over my plants, just kind of zhuzh them around, you know, simulate the wind. I don't have a fan going right now. Just strengthens them. I won't be doing that again over this tray. Um, I was not expecting stinging nettle to sting quite as badly as it did, so that was fun. Um, and then the last two things I have in here are two different types of calendula. I've got pink calendula, and I think it's snow white. Calendula. So there's one tray. This lovely tray is just an entire tray of different snapdragons. I didn't even label them, which is, you know, it's whatever. I didn't really care. Um, it's a mix of like super tall varieties for cutting. So I need to come through here. I need to pinch these um, down a little bit here. It'll encourage branching of these. We get some more blooms, but I've got one whole tray of snaps. I've got another whole tray of hollyhocks for the cottage garden. Um, again, an assortment. These, I believe, I don't remember which variety these were, honestly, but I know it specifically said they will flower on their first year. So we'll have some hollyhock blooms in the cottage garden. I've got an entire tray of zinnias. Um, I've been soil blocking all of these. I didn't mention that all of these flowers are soil blocked. So I think there's... 32 in each tray. I need to do an updated, I'm gonna do like an early spring garden slash homestead tour to show you guys what um, we've been working on. There's some updates going out there. These guys are gonna go into a new in-ground bed I'm working on alongside of the raised bed garden. Um, so I'm gonna have these kind of around the perimeter of the garden, but I need to work on that yet. So 
tray of zinnias. I will forever have zinnias. I love them so much and they're so great for the pollinators. Tomatoes. We just worked on these, um, repotting them. So I've got Chadwick Cherry, Gold Metal, Pink Ox Heart, Amish Paste, Sun Gold Cherry, Beef Steak, uh, Wapsipinic and Peach, Sart Roloi. I'm not sure how to pronounce that one. It's R O L O I S E. Uh, Dr. Witchy, and some more Amish Paste on this one. On this guy, got some peppers and some more tomatoes, just some alpaca tomatoes. Cayenne and not a pino. What else do we got going on in here? Um, some eggplant. These are the jewel eggplant. My ground cherry and tomatillos did not germinate and it has been a good long while, so I'm gonna have to reseed those. Um, Ajvarsky peppers, two pockets of those. I've got a dead leaf and pepperoncini and shishito peppers. These are a whole bunch of herbs. That smells so good. I wish you could smell this with me right now. Um, I do have some lisianthus, you guys. <laughs> Remember last year I had two that germinated and made it into the garden and they were just stunning. I love them so much. I did three six packs this year and I had a whole bunch germinate. I'm so excited. I've got pink, green, and I think champagne. I think all of the champagne germinated. See? No, not my face. Not my face. There we go. They look really good. Um, I gotta get this back in here without crushing a whole bunch of stuff. So I've got oregano here. I pulled out my last oregano plant that I've had for years in the garden. Um, it just spreads and spreads and spreads and I wasn't loving the location of it. So I ended up just tearing that out and I gave it to the chickens. They had a feast. Um, I wanted to plant some more and then put it in a pot somewhere where I can control it a bit better. Um, we've got rosemary, which is looking beautiful in here. Um, and this is thyme, um, chamomile, what are you, what are you, oh, marjoram, no, that is thyme, this is marjoram, no, don't mind me, don't mind me, that's marjoram, really, yeah, it is marjoram, okay, um, thyme, marjoram, chamomile, there's some parsley, and some chives, which are going nuts. I need to give them a haircut. And I have some foxglove here in the very back. Okay, this tray's looking a little bit sad. Um, I just watered them again, so don't mind that. Um, that's mullen. It'll be okay, it'll revive. Um, hyssop, lace flower. None of my Dusty Miller came up, no big deal. Um, they were older seeds and that was the last in the pack, so. It's fine. Um, this is Roselle hibiscus. I'm excited about. It's a little bit too big <laughs> for these containers. I need to repot that. Was not expecting it to grow as quickly as it did. So we'll have to work on that. Um, and then I have a whole bunch of Larkspur. It was like really spotty germination. So I just have a few of those. And then in the back here is some marshmallow. We're growing a lot this year. We're halfway through. Um, more herbs here. I've got some more parsley. So I'm growing for my mom and dad as well. So I have a few duplicates of things, but I've got some more parsley for them, some more chamomile for my mom. My mom's going to work on some like some medicinal herbs, but also um, a tea garden. So I'm growing her a few things for that. Um, some different types of basil, Italian large leaf, dwarf, Greek, uh, Piccolino, it's so cute. It's just this tiny little basil. I love it so much. A cinnamon basil and then some holy basil. Um, I've got just a few uh, violas that came up. And then we've got kale and spinach. We've got another tray full of some random stuff. Um, I have some cold weather crops that really should be outside right now, but life happened. So I'm a bit behind, but I've got a whole bunch of cabbage here. I've got 16 that need to go outside. I need to start hardening off some of my cold weather 
things like the spinach and the kale and the cabbage. I've got some beets that need to go out. We'll get there. Um, I've got some Crespedia in here, these little spiky guys. And then this is, what are you? I did write these down. Dwarf Cosmos. Um, blue Plurum, only one of those guys came up. That's okay. Is that, that's not Blue Plurum. That is most definitely a cabbage. How'd that end up over there? Um, Nigella, or Love in a Mist. Um, Cupcake Cosmos, and then Apricotta Cosmos. So, got those. These look sad, really sad. These are onions and shallots and leeks. Um, my shallots did absolutely terrible. I've already cut these guys down three times. I need to go upstairs and do it again. Um, but these were ones that more than once I have neglected to water and they did not love that. So slim pickings for some good onions. The, these are white wax pickling. They did much better. They're looking much healthier. Um, in here I have Cipollini and Walla Walla. I have two. I just have these two Walla Wallas left. That's it. It's okay. Um, oh no, there's three. Okay, we have three. Um, Cipollini didn't do great either. These are all leeks. They're doing, they're doing okay. I probably have one or two hundred in there, honestly. I need to come through and thin them out a little bit and give them a haircut. I did go ahead and purchase some shallots from Dixondale Farms. They just got here. Um, we need to plant those, but because my shallots did so poorly and I prefer those in cooking over onions, I wanted to make sure I had enough, so I ordered a few of those. Another tray that is struggling. For some reason, some trays suffered worse than others when I forgot to water, so this is all celery. I had like 36 soil blocks in here. Um, you can see a lot of the empty soil blocks now and a lot of the dead celery. So I might just go ahead and re-sow some of this. I still have a little bit of time for at least to get somewhat of a head start before it goes outside, but oops. I just watered these so they're all laying down, but I did my multi-sown beets again, the Charles Downing method. I loved that last year. So these need to get hardened off just for like a day or two. And it's kind of nice right now, this time of year, it's overcast most days and there's a lot of rain usually for us in April. So that'll work out great. These are gonna go outside here probably in the next few days. Another tray of flowers. These are just nasturtium. Uh, a whole bunch of different varieties. I didn't have quite a few come up, so I might go back through and re sow some seeds, um, and they'll just be a little bit behind the others. So, again, a mix. Uh, I think there was some Alaskan salmon. <laughs> Alaskan salmon? No, that's not right. Um, there was, oh, maybe it was Alaskan red. I don't remember. Um, there was a salmon colored, but it's not Alaskan salmon. Um, I wanna say there was one called Bloody Mary. Yeah, a whole bunch. This is the tray we just sewed. So I did a whole bunch of my squash. I have Candy Roaster, Honey Nut, Golden Hubbard, Dumpling, Burgess Buttercup, Cinderella Long Island Cheese, Casparita, um, winter luxury and delicata. And then I also have some zucchini, some cucumber, some muncher and Boston pickling. And then for the zucchini, I just did, um, I think it was called gray striped. So that's that. And then I have just a couple straggler tomatoes here. When I was repotting the tomatoes, there were just so many extras. Um, usually I can't control myself and I'll just repot all of them, but I'm just really limited on space this year. I upped production on a lot of things, especially herbs. Um, and I just don't have the space inside to grow them all this year and the greenhouse does not hold heat. So just a couple got saved this year, um, just in case I have one or two that don't make it. Um, or, you know, at the end of it all, I have some extras I can give away. 
Okay, my friend, that wraps up this week's video. We got to catch up a little bit and got to see what's going on here on our homestead in early spring. Let me know if you have any questions down below. I would love to hear from you. We've got lots of fun, exciting things coming. Warmer days are so close. The garden in full bloom is so close and I'm so excited to bring you all along. Lots still needs to be done. So soon we will get our hands in the dirt. You all have a blessed day and I will see you next time. Take care.